you know, for years people have asked me, because of silver's industrial consumption profile, it, its duality, it's both an investment asset and an industrial commodity, people would ask over the years, what would happen if we went into a world recession slash depression and industrial demand consumption fell off dramatically for silver? Would that change your mind about being bullish on silver? What would the effect be on price? Well, it was always theoretical, but my answer theoretical answer was always that being a industrial commodity, silver being an industrial commodity that's uh, basically consumed on a GDP basis, silver would not be obviously the only commodity that would be subject to a fall off in industrial consumption in a recessionary environment, a world recessionary environment. Other things would as well, obviously copper, lead, zinc, these are purely industrial commodities. So if we had such a situation developing, you would see demand for copper and lead and zinc and all other industrial items also decline. It wouldn't just be silver that would decline in industrial consumption. It would be everything. And if everything did decline in industrial consumption, the price would come down and there'd be less demand for it. And as the price came down, mines would begin to shut and adjust to the new lower demand profile for everything. And in doing so, silver as a byproduct of uh, of these other metals for the majority of its uh, production profile would also have uh, much lower production. But this was always theoretical. Now it's not theoretical. Now the prices for the first time in our lifetimes have suddenly and sharply dropped for reasons related to the macroeconomic picture and credit picture. Prices have plummeted sharply in all industrial metals to below the cost of production, and we are going to see impacts in production of copper and lead and zinc, and also in silver as a byproduct. And this is something we've never seen before. This is something that's always been theoretical. So if you look at the production profile of silver, where we it comes from, of the 670 million ounces that were mined, in uh, according to the Silver Institute and uh, Goldfields Mineral Services, that were mined in 2007, of the 670, 60% of it, or 400 million ounces of the 670 million ounces, come as a result of byproduct uh, production from lead and zinc mines and copper mines. They also get another 10% or 65 million ounces comes from uh, gold mining. Well, you could easily take out conservatively 25%, okay, of copper and zinc and lead production in a very severe, which appears that we're in, economic slowdown. That would result to more than 100 million ounces being whacked off the byproduct production of silver. Now, there will be a lower industrial consumption for, for silver, no doubt about it, but the fact that we're in a investment rush for silver, I mean, the, the data is clear, as I wrote about last week, the data is clear that uh, more people are rushing to buy silver than ever before. You know, you got shortages, you've got big premiums on a retail basis. I think it's about to touch on the wholesale level. So in this environment, to throw in production cuts, albeit with consumption demand also going down, uh, I think production will go quicker because it's more price sensitive. The users aren't going to stop using silver because the price is going down, you know, use more of it. But miners will cut back much quicker on production because of price. And uh, that combination be just a devastatingly bullish impact on silver. I could see real easy if this thing plays out as it looks like it should play out and production does come down in silver because of this base metal production. And by the way, primary production is certainly below the cost of production of silver as well. It's not, there's no silver miners out there that are making a profit, okay, at less than $10 an ounce. It's like they're all losers too, so you might have cutbacks from a primary basis as well. With this combination of very strong investment demand and promising to get stronger considering the nervous economic uh, conditions that we have out there and a production falling faster than than industrial consumption might fall you have the makings for a real shortage in silver i mean I'm, the shortage looks clear to me it looked like it was coming anyway before we had this new potential of uh, a fall off in byproduct and primary silver production it's throwing fuel on the fire, and it wouldn't surprise me at all within a several months. If this plays out, it would be hard for me to imagine silver not moving up to the 20 or $30 mark, even if everything else stayed the same. 
copper and lead and zinc, they could all stay the same, and you could have a situation, because of the investment demand in silver, that that could launch upwards easily to 20 or $30 an ounce in the current set of circumstances. We'll see what happens from that point on. But that's what I think this impact is going to be, and it's all new. I mean, people are just starting to wake up to it. I think you'll hear a lot more about it in the days and weeks ahead as people realize that, wait a minute, uh, the last thing we need in the silver market now, given the current tightness, is a dramatic fall off in production, particularly byproduct production, for the first time in in decades. I, I don't recall a time when silver production might have been so jeopardized by a decline in price of base metals than we have right now. Ted, when you look at the investment side of silver, because you're connected with over there at Investment Rarities, but what's going on in terms of the premiums people are paying, or do, do you know anything about that? And, and supply, are they having a hard time getting the silver to sell to clients? And also, you talked about this big investment from the public, and it, it seems to be global, right? But people are trading in their fiat currencies all over the globe, and they're taking in gold and silver because they want to save in gold and silver now, uh, which is probably a smart thing to do. But investment demand for silver net is really much stronger than gold, you were pointing out in something that you wrote recently, when you compare the two pound for pound. And what about the uh, the situation with supplies? Well, they're tight. I mean, you don't have to go very far to see that. You know, it's funny. People are, are somewhat uh, reluctant to use the word shortage. For some reason, it, it, it conjures up a lot of different emotional factors. But, you know, a shortage in a commodity is basically defined by delays, if you have to wait for it, and if the price goes up on certain forms of it, and that's exactly what we have in silver on a retail basis. We have delays and rationing in terms of uh, the U.S. Mint, uh, say, producing coins, and you have to wait to get delivery for all different uh, varieties of, of, of retail forms of silver, and you got to pay big premiums for it. That just shows you that the market is tight. People have been quick to point out that, oh, this is only on the retail side, it's not on the wholesale side. But I say, well, wait a minute, we've never really had these kind of shortages before on the retail side. So it's not just a, and it's been going on for the balance of this year. It's been going on since the beginning of the year. So it's it's a slow, consistent, and persistent tightness that we see. The premiums have been building up. They're the highest now than they've been all year long, and that means that they're the highest in history. The delays are the longest. It's only a matter of time, I think, before it slips over into the wholesale area, in which case uh, then nobody can deny that there, you know, we have a bona fide shortage right now. Throw in this the discussion about the potential fall off in production of silver, mine production of silver, both on a primary and a byproduct basis, and you know, you got a shortage that's inevitable on a wholesale basis. So you want to put things in perspective. This is the first time in history we've had a shortage on silver. I mean, there's no, there's of any type, and it looks like it's going to get worse. And you want to call a spade a spade. This is a, this is a shortage. It's unprecedented. 